It has been a long time since we've seen a storm like the one we saw last night. Snoqualmie Falls is raging after all that rain that fell and wind caused a nightmare for power crews. Down trees knocked out power to thousands of people. And now a live look outside today. What a difference 24 hours makes. This time yesterday, the rain was really starting to pick up. Today, the sunshine returned and the massive job of cleanup began. Welcome to King 5 News tonight at 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Wright. I'm Joyce Taylor. Thanks for being here. Neighborhoods were noisy this morning with the chainsaws that came out. People starting to clean up the mess from overnight. Sebastian Robertson joining us live now with a look at some of the damage to homes in the area. Sebastian. In Lakewood, the now is those fallen trees and branches. This is what you'll find. Many of the roadways still blocked off. At least a handful still blocked off as crews try to get power up and running. One couple we spoke to says this is the worst storm they've seen in decades. Power tools and hold music. Your call is important to us. Replace the overnight sound of roaring weather. While friends and neighbors work to patch a hole in Richard Green's roof, he's trying to find any resources available to help. My stomach kind of dropped when I started walking around and looking at the damage. Richard and Connie Green are two 60-something year olds that have lived in this house in Lakewood for 30 years. Last night's storm may make them move. There's been wind storms, but this is the tree broke in half and came down on the house. Pictures from inside the house show a branch making its way in. From the roof, a look at a skylight that crumbled. We've got ceilings caved in, branches coming through the ceilings. and Overnight, western Washington thrashed about by high winds. Gusts as high as 80 miles per hour in some areas. In Duval, similar work to clear branches and trunks from this house. By noon Wednesday, nearly a quarter of a million PSE customers still without power. Back in Lakewood, and it's neighbors, not insurance companies, that are cleaning debris. Uh, I used to be the one that would help people, and now we're getting help. It, it's an amazing feeling. A couple left wondering what they'll do next. It's kind of an old people helping old people. As we head into the evening, Puget Sound Energy, Seattle City Light, and the energy provider here in Lakewood all saying they're still dealing with outages. As we head into the evening, some people may be without power throughout the night. In Lakewood, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. So how many of you were either wakened by all of the wind noise or didn't get much sleep at all? Adam Claiborne joining us now. Biggest gust right around midnight and beyond. It was pretty scary, actually. Yes, Joyce. So we had that area of low pressure moving through the area just around midnight. And once it pushed on by, then you had high pressure that quickly raced on in. And the atmosphere likes to do this thing where it equals itself out. So the pressures that were low at first started to become higher. And then you had that gust of wind that helped to try to bring in some of that higher pressure. And this is what we got. 60 mile per hour wind gust in Enumclaw. Bellingham came in at about 50 miles per hour as well as, as in Tacoma. Now those were our school net sites and it's pretty neat that we have uh, those locations in some of those localized neighborhoods. Now we had a bunch of rain too. We still have some flooding concerns, albeit it looks like the rain has pretty much subsided for many of us here. And that's across Skagit County and that's going to be until 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, here's the radar. Not a whole lot really left for us as far as the rain. That will continue to diminish as we head on into the night, but uh, you can see there are some lighter to maybe moderate snow showers that are up into the Cascades as well as the rain showers getting closer to the foothills. For us tonight, uh, we'll drop into the 30s and we'll notice that we'll probably have a few clouds and maybe some areas of fog developing too by the time we head out tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about our next rain chance though, plus we'll have a look at back at some of the rain totals from this past system coming up, Mark. All right, Adam, thank you. People across the Northwest, as Sebastian said, are still without power as nightfall arrives. The temperatures are beginning to drop. Puget Sound Energy still has 163,000 customers affected by the outage. Seattle City Lights outage map lit up in red as we speak, showing the trouble spots there. Nearly 7,000 homes and businesses affected. And Snohomish PUD is trying to get the lights back on for more than 56,000 customers there. Well, all day, utility crews have been out busily trying to restore the power across western Washington. King 5's Glenn Farley live in Edmonds tonight with an update on the effort there. Glenn. Well, we had a major power line situation down here. The crews, that blinking light behind me, they've been working on this all day. Uh, they were up to 95,000 uh, customers who were out 
at about nine o'clock this morning when I talked to Snohomish County PUD. The situation's getting better, but some of the lights may not be on until tomorrow, but it could have been worse. It's buckets up, repairing a major outage in Edmonds, one of the first places to be blasted by the winds coming off Puget Sound. 1,200 customers out of juice for much of the day just here. The western half of Washington state has a power problem, a combination of high wind storms and a lot of trees. And nowhere was the consequence of that clearer than on the east side during the Hanukkah Eve storm of 2006. In that case, huge poles carrying major lines were blown over and people were without power for weeks. But since Hanukkah Eve, um, much of our focus has been on, on technology. Dan Koch came to PSC right after that storm. He's director of electric operations. So things like distribution automation, um, these are often referred to as self-healing grids. Um, so automatic detection of, a, of an outage and uh, automatic switching that restores power through redundancy. The folks in this business have a word for this, resilience. Can the power system keep the lights on? So we have a uh quite a bit of redundancy at the higher voltage levels, the big transmission lines that you see when you drive across a country. Professor Daniel Kirshen is a professor of electrical engineering at the University of Washington, who works a lot in the area of power distribution. When we get down to the neighborhood level, we don't have that level of redundancy. And again, as you said, it's a question of money. It's all about money, obviously, and this is going to take time. A lot's been done. There's a lot more to do. One other aspect of this battery technology, giant batteries, which are used to sort of smooth out the power, um, power demand, those could also keep the lights on a neighborhood, and this utility here in Snohomish County has actually been working on that. Live in Edmonds, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Glenn, thanks for the update there. So when you're away from your TV, you can follow all of the warnings and advisories 24 hours a day from your smartphone. Just download the King 5 app in Google Play or the Apple App Store.